promise that uh, he or she will keep it secret. I, I okay, would we have here yeah, also uh, expert, expert of access to information from Spain, Lydia Blackland from Spain. Do you want me to? Yeah, could you, could you also use yeah, okay. your work in that um, <coughs> Okay. My name is Lydia Medland. I'm from Access Info Europe. We're a campaign organization working on the right of access to information at the European level, um, which means at the EU level as well as at the member states level. And we are also very uh, engaged in international debates on the right of access to information. So um, the first thing I wanted to say is, is basically what we understand by the right of access to information. We understand that in democratic societies, um, um, governments work on behalf of the people, and therefore the information that they hold, uh, they hold on behalf of the people, and therefore uh, people have, should have access to that information wherever possible. So when we're talking about um, you know, to where where is the where are the borders of the right to know? We understand that the right of access to information um, is applies to all information, applies to all government projects, applies to all uh, everything that's done by the government in representation uh, of of the people. So um, then we enter into complications. No, but um, what we're essentially talking about is. Um, is, is a right that applies to everything and where the norm is that the citizens should have access to that information. And that has been recognised just, just as a footnote by the UN Convention of Human Rights uh, last year, um, 2011, in their comment on Article 19, UN Com uh, uh, Committee on Human Rights confirmed that it access information as a human right. It's been confirmed by the uh, Convention on Access to Official Documents of the Council of Europe, which Lithuania has signed and ratified, um, but which hasn't yet come into force. And it's been confirmed by the European Court of Human Rights, as well as by the other international courts of human rights, for example, the Organization of, um, of, of American uh, States. Um, sorry, the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. So. Um, sorry, because I'm jumping in here and not got my ideas in the, or a, a different place. So international, so access to information is a human right. We've got that clear. Um, it's not a, an absolute right. There are obviously limitations to that right, but those limitations are have been defined or, or uh, are outlined time and time again uh, in international law, in national laws. They tend to be fixed. Uh, fixed uh, exceptions along the lines of national security, personal data protection, sometimes um, well, various things that eat commercial interests, there tend to be between 8 and 15 uh, exceptions. The question is that, uh, so I have a right to ask my government for information. At that point, the government has to consider if that information falls into an exception, if it falls into, for example, commercial interests, if it falls into, for example, national security. If they decide it does fall into national security or commercial interest, they then have to consider the public interest or the harm that would be done by that information. So let's say it's information about a nuclear power station um, that uh, could fall into a commercial interest. There would be a consideration uh, made at that point of whether it would be a commercial interest, uh, of what harm could be done, uh, would be done to the company, to the commercial interest, to competition by releasing that information, and what overriding public interest uh, there might be in releasing that information. Um, so what I'm, what I want to to point out here is that in access to information law, both nationally and internationally, and in practice, there already exists. There already exist safeguards against giving away uh, personal data, giving away um, trade secrets, giving away um, okay, commercial information. And it isn't the role of, um, of individual uh, contracts to redefine the right of access to information. It isn't the role of an individual contract to say, no, 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 it's all very well, your freedom of information law, but this bit doesn't enter into it. 
that's not the role of freedom of information. So whilst it's, whilst it's normal practice for a government on embarking on a, an agreement with a, with a private organisation to define a, um, a confidentiality uh, clause, um, that confidentiality clause doesn't override freedom of information law. It doesn't have, shouldn't, doesn't, shouldn't have the power to seal off, uh, to, to, to make exempt a whole section of that process which already exists. So the problem and the reason that we're here today is that in this concession treaty, we've seen for the first time something that hasn't been seen in freedom of information law and practice as far as our international network of experts go, which comprises of 500 individuals working in pretty much all countries of the world, which is that in the contract, in the, in the agreement itself, it proactively says that no, uh, no member of the public shall be entitled to receive any or all information to provide to, to the Republic of Lithuania. Um, every request from a citizen should be considered. Every request should be considered on the basis of what information could be given out or not. Um, when I asked our... Um, I coordinate a network called the Freedom of Information Advocate Network, which is an international network of lawyers and activists working on freedom of information. When I asked them if they'd ever seen anything like this before, they said, yeah, um, we're obviously very acquainted with, with um, confidentiality uh, agreements, with things like this, but there is a building body of knowledge, and especially in a context in which more and more of our public functions are being done in a private sphere, of these kinds of confidentiality agreements not being allowed to deter, to override freedom of information law. So from the, um, the UK Commission, Information Commissioners, from the New Zealand Information Commissioner, from uh, in, ver in, various, in various other cases, which I've compiled in pieces of paper here, um, information commissioners whose job it is to, to, to do that consideration of is this information to do with, could this information have to do with national security? Is there an overriding public interest? They always do that balance of what's the information requested? What's the public interest? What's the harm? What's the public interest? What's the harm? And, and when they do that, they have come to, they've, they've come to uh, various, at various points, the conclusion that, it, uh, that access to information, uh, that, that these commercial um, these, these um, confidentiality agreements are only indicative of what, uh, of what uh, could, could, could be consisted of, of a commercial interest, but should not be allowed to overrule um, the Freedom of Information Act in that any request being made by a citizen should be considered, because that's what we mean by a human right of access to information. So the reason that we're here and the reason that I'm not sitting on the fence on this issue is that if we understand access to information as a human right, we should be quite clear about not letting the standards slip to, to, where, to, where, to where that goes. Um, and I also want to say what a pleasure it is to be here in Lithuania and having this debate, and how it's really great to see how an issue like nuclear power or like anything else that could, be, that could become quite a big issue brings about... Um, this consideration in quite detail about the important issue of transparency and access to information. Thanks very much. Thank you for your presentation. Do you have some reactions from the audience?